Hello everyone, good afternoon, how are you? Hope everyone is doing really, really well in this uh, very uh, comfortable um, afternoon where we're going to talk about uh, the our MSTART Cycle 5 program from the Mining Hub. I hope that everyone's doing well. Whenever you're uh, listening to this live or wherever you are, uh, we hope to reach you all uh, in, in good spirits. Let me introduce myself. My name uh, is Guilherme Marinho. I'm a corporate accelerator for Neo Ventures. And we're going today to uh, talk a little bit about our uh, MSTOT Cycle 5 program. And I'd like to remind you all that our deadline for applications is on uh, November 29th. So keep in mind, please, of that date. Uh, it is a very important date that you guys need to uh, keep in mind in order to um, correctly apply to MSTART Cycle 5. And um, with no longer ado, let's, uh, I'd like to call here to, to speak a little bit about um, the mining hub, uh, Claudia Genis. Uh, it's she's she's always here with us and always a, a very welcome. Uh, I'd, I'd like to give you a very warm welcome, Claudia. Uh, are you are you there with us already? Yes, I'm here. Can you see me? <laughs> yes, Claudia. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, let me let me give you um, your slides so you can uh, start your presentation. All right. So thank you very much, Guilherme, for the introduction. I'm, I'm really happy to be here talking to you and to all the people that are looking at us today, watching us. And we are going to uh, learn a little bit about Cycle 5. And I would like to thank you all for allowing us to get inside your homes and talk to you a little bit about the work that we are developing here in Brazil at Mining Hub. So my name is Claudia Diniz and I'm the Executive Director of Mining Hub. And I will tell you a little bit about what is Mining Hub and what is MSTART, our program. Uh, Helene? Yes, let's go forward. Yes. So you are looking at the way that Mining Hub works. So we have here a little explanation and little infographs that show you uh, everything that we do with the information that we get and the challenges that we get from the mining sector. If you look at, at this small circle on the left side of, of the screen, you can see that we get the challenges uh, from the mining sector in Brazil. We bring them inside Mining Hub and we share these challenges with all the actors of, of the, the, the main chain of, of the mining sector in Brazil. So here we can say that uh, we share these challenges with uh, the suppliers, the OEMs, no matter if they are working with us or not. We also share this, this working with us as partners, as I would like to say. And we share these challenges also with the startups and all the eco, uh, innovation ex ecosystems that we have in Brazil and also outside Brazil. We also share this with the government that is missing here, uh, a, little, a little circle here, talking about governments. And then uh, what is important to, to explain is that the way that we work with governments is that uh, we talk to them because we have a relationship even with the small governments around the communities around the, the operational sites and also talk to uh, different countries governments that are very interested in the work that we are developing here in brazil and uh, they bring new startups they bring new companies and new technologies that to, they can share around uh, mining, mining technologies and mining knowledge 
with the mining sector here in Brazil uh, through Mining Hub. We also have a very good relationship with the universities and uh, science and technology in institutes that bring us some knowledge and also some uh, development of solutions for the more complex uh, challenges that we have here. So we have a good relationship and we bring the challenges to all these actors that help us find solutions to this, this challenges. So we, we bring back the, the solutions, solutions that have a, a high impact in the sector and normally low investments. So we can bring them back to the, to the sector in Brazil. We bring the solutions, but we also bring transformation. We bring uh, new cultures, um, agile mindset and knowledge. So uh, knowing all of these and have all, all of this information that we get, we can also think and build the future of the mining sector in Brazil. So this is how we work inside our methodology of working the challenges that uh, we, we get from the mining sector. And this is very interesting because this brings a new solution, a new way of looking to some old challenges of the mining sector and also some new challenges that we can start talking when we involve all of these people, all of these actors and all the knowledge that we can share around this. So all these connections can bring a very, very different way of thinking and way of working as a collaborative environment, a very receptive environment. And uh, this goes directly to our value proposition, which is to be the pillar, the transformation pillar of the mining sector through open innovation. So that's how Mining Hub is created, was created and how we think and how we work. So I can show you on the next slide, Guilherme, por favor, uh, the associated mining companies that are working with us nowadays. It's really important for you to see them. Nowadays, we have 22 uh, mining companies, Brazilian mining companies, in fact, that work with us on this development of new solutions, on this search of new solutions and this new way, new vision for the mining sector. We also have some associated supplier companies uh, that are working with us. And you can see here that we have suppliers from different, uh, different products, different services and uh, equipments that are very important to the mining business. We also have some partners that are working with us. Next slide, please. And you can see here that they are very important partners for uh, our work here. Some are with us since the very beginning, like the Neo Ventures, the company that uh, Guilherme works. So Neo Ventures is a, a corporate accelerator that work with us, helping us put together all the startup programs that we have. And they are working with us since the very beginning. For those who doesn't know, uh, Money Hub is almost two years old, <laughs> so we, we are very, very young. We've been working, we start our working and preparation of working in October 2018. So, and we were um, launched, in fact, we were funded and founded, in fact, in January 2019. So we are very, very young, but we have uh, very strong partnerships around with these companies, Neo Ventures, Ibram, with the Association Mining, uh, is the East Association? Oh, Mining, <laughs> sorry about that. Mining Association, the Brazilian Mining Association, which uh, helps us with the administrative work. We work, it's where we are located in uh, one floor of the we work here in Belo Horizonte, Brazil. And Goulart and Colepicolo Advogados, uh, it's a law firm that help us with all the, the legal issues that we can have, contracts and everything around the legal issues. FTC is a business school 
that helps us and work with us on the strategic planning and uh, and other issues, internal issues, and also with some uh, courses to the startups and everything that we have around education. We are planning to do a very interesting uh, work with them. Microsoft is very well known and we are, they are also an associated supplier company, but they are, they have a very nice partnership with us and the, the startups that work with us can go and apply for the Microsoft startup program and have a lot of advantages and benefits around the softwares and technical support from, from the Microsoft team. Helene? And here, I'm going to talk a little bit about AIMSTART. I can show you that I, uh, my AIMSTART is uh, one of our programs that work with the collective challenges, which means that the challenges that are common to the mining sector. It's not specific for any company that is associated to us, but it's a collective challenge. It's a common challenge of the sector. So as I explained to you before, uh, working with the, with the startups will bring agility, networking, low cost, and better reach. So we will change the culture of each mining company and also their image and the reputation of the sector. We are trying to bring new visions, new solutions, a new way of looking into the mining sector, a new way of looking into the challenges that we have around here in Brazil. So how it works, we have a very simple methodology to work with, with the startups. Although it's a, a lot of work that we developed here because we start talking to all the mining companies that we have associated to Mining Hub. And then we collected the challenge that they think we should work on and, and search for a solution. And after we have all the, the shared challenges from these companies, we do a collective prioritization. And we invited all the companies to come into a series of workshops where we, we can together choose the 15 challenges that we will work on that cycle. So this already happened for cycle five. So we have now a list of prioritized uh, challenges and we launched it on last uh, October 26th, we launched the call for application. So we are here to explain each of the challenges that we launched in this call for application. So if you go to our, our website, uh, miningherbit.com.br, you will find all, the, all the, this call for application with the explanations of each of these challenges and which mining companies really invest on the solution of these challenges. Because the mining companies here, they invest in the solution, in the development of the solution of that or of some challenges we don't invest in the startup itself but we are looking for the development we are looking for the solutions so this way we can the mining companies can invest in the development of the solution and the intellectual property the knowledge that is generated during this development belongs to the startup because the mining company is investing in the solution, not in the startup itself. And another rule that we have for this program, which is very, very important, is that the mining company cannot also buy any shares of the startup during this development. So we really put in the money, they are really investing in the development of the solution. And the knowledge is completely, it, completely belongs to the startup. So it's a very, very inter interesting point of our program. So come and work with us because you should uh, have this, this chance. Give, give us a chance to work with us and bring your solution. Because after you, uh, apply, whoa, after you apply for the, for, to bring your solution to us, to work with us, you are going, you'll be going through a very interesting selection process. And after 
we have the selection process. We all the startups will go to a boot camp phase, and then you will talk to the mining companies. You will design uh, the schedule of the work. You're gonna see the scope of the work, and then we will start the proof of concept development, and we work inside the mining company and operational side together with a very special specialized team technical team that can help you with all the issues that we should have during the this development and then after five months of this development we go to a demo day where you will share the the solution the development of the, the, the of the solution you will share with the public so everybody will be able to see the solution that was developed developed by your startup and the mining company. So this is how we work and this is how MSTART works. So please, all these details you can see in our website. So you can go there and visit uh, www.miningcombr. So Guilherme, I think now you're going to show them the challenges and talk to the technical people from the mining companies that will explain each of those challenges to you. Okay. Thank you again. For Precisely. Your and have a very, very good day. Guilherme. Thank you so much, Claudia. It's always so refreshing uh, to hear you talk about Mining Hub. Um, uh, it's, it, it's very um, exciting because I think that it's such a key um, sector in our economy is especially in here in brazil but also to the whole world and and bringing innovation and uh new technologies to it it's so important in order to uh, bring joy and bring a new uh, and breathe new air uh into the um into the, into the ecosystem of the sector uh and, and I, I believe really truly believe that uh mining hub is a key uh, it's, a, it's a key thing to uh, drive this forward and and hear you speak about it it always makes me feel uh, great about um, where we're going okay, uh, so thank you. <laughs> uh, it's all right so uh, next up guys uh, we're going to um, see what are the challenges that are being proposed for the aim spot cycle 5. Uh, and it's also really uh, interesting to see uh, the, the numbers of the M as I was talking to Claudia before, to see the numbers of the M start uh, growing. Uh, as Claudia mentioned, uh, M Mining Hub is only a couple of years old or is going to uh, complete its second year uh, in, uh, in a brief period of time. So to have already performed uh, four um, cycles of, uh, of, of acceleration is quite impressive. And now uh, starting our uh, fifth cycle, which is uh, really, really great. So let's get to know all of the challenges that are being proposed for this cycle. And, and today we're going to speak about uh, two of the main themes in, uh, in Mining Hub. We're going to talk about water management and tailings and waste management. So uh, for the, the challenges uh, inside uh, water management team, uh, we're going to talk about water use mapping and reduction, integrated water resources data management system, and water treatment for environment return. So for this first team, and for our first challenge in the first team, which is water management and our first challenge is water used uh, mapping uh, and reduction. I'd like to uh, ask from uh, Auda Minerals, I'd like to ask Manuela uh, to join us and talk a little bit about this challenge and what it means to Auda Minerals. Manuela, are you with us? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Okay, perfect. Thank you for the warm introduction, Guilherme, and thank you for the opportunity of presenting our, our challenge here. So just to give a bit of context, this is the first time Aura is participating on the M-Start, so this is the first cycle we're in. And I wanted to give a bit of context 
uh, on Aura itself. So Aura is a golden copper production company focused on the development and operation of intermediate size projects in the Americas. And Aura has a vision of mining in full terms, thinking holistically and in a sustainable way uh, on how business impacts and benefits from each of the stakeholders. Uh, so we call this mining 360 degrees, which has to do with our desire of constant evolution, looking for ways to be even better in what we do and building a stronger and smarter and more sustainable mining company. And we have two very important pillars for the company under this 360 vision, which are sustainability and innovation, which are very deeply related with the challenge that we are seeing today of mapping and reducing the, consump the consumption of water. So to give a bit of context on the challenge itself, water consumption is a critical problem for our minerals on all its operations. Um, due to the regions in which they are located that have water instability and fluvial scarcity. Uh, so the operation in Mexico, we have operations in Brazil, Honduras, Mexico, and the US, but our operations in Mexico are the most critical ones at first. So that's why we prioritized it for, for this challenge. And for those who are not familiar with gold mining, uh, the main use of water is in the plants in the milling and the flotation operations. And currently about 50% of the water is already reused. So for Mexico itself, our Aranza Zoo mine uh, has the most uh, latent challenge and it's located in a semi-desert with a high cost of, of water acquisition. In addition, uh, as the annual rainfall is very low, there are also issues with the community that surrounds the mine. So the aim is to reduce water consumption in the mineral process, processing process. Um, as the government of Mexico is no longer issuing grants, or is conducting a hydrogeological study to optimize drilling and water collection. So the main challenges here that we see are, and you can see in the drawing, are the long distances from the collection, the clandestine uh, catchments, and the fact that the lines are very old and they pass under the communities. So the results we want to achieve with, with this challenge are, are the following, and you can see there as well. We want to increase the percentage of water we use. We want to improve the use of new water. We want to improve the reserve management. Uh, we also want to achieve a greater precision when drilling the wells. And we want to improve the pumping efficiency. And some difficulties are for sure the seasonality uh, and the specificities of, of the region, especially because it's a semi-desert. Um, the need to have precision in places where the water volume compensates the drilling for the wells. Uh, and we have a history of some failed attempts there. Uh, the high evaporation due to high temperatures. And I think that's pretty much it. I think you're on mute, Guilherme. Yes, I was on mute. Yeah, thank you for that. And thank you for your kind presentation and also for your, uh, it was very clearing. Uh, I'd also like to uh, welcome you, as, as you said, it's, it's, it's the first time uh, Auto is, is presenting a challenge. So uh, welcome to uh, MSTOT Cycle 5. Thank you. The, it's, it, it's really interesting to see uh, newcomers and, uh, and, and mining companies which are um, Starting to starting to to apply, and it's always uh, wonderful to receive uh, you guys as a part of it. And also, um, water use mapping and reduction. What an important uh, and um, and current theme of, of 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 the world. So it's such a um, it, 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 it's not uh, and it doesn't come as a, as a surprise that uh, that. Water managing is uh, a theme within Mining Hub. It's a, a very pressing matter. So uh, for our next challenge, I'd like to call uh, Ligia uh, Gignus from um, Anglo-American. Uh, Ligia, are you there with us? Hi, Guilherme. Thank you for Hello. the opportunity. 
Uh, and, 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 just, and just before you start, I'd like to highlight uh, what uh, uh, another pleasure, which is uh, having uh, women with us. So we have we first had Claudia speaking, and then uh, Manuela, and now Ligia, and it's it's really really great uh, to see the women presence uh, in in the mining sector. Um, we really uh, welcome you guys. So. Ligia, uh, are you already seeing your challenge? No, you're not. I think that now it's on the screen. So uh, feel free to explain it to us the best way you can. Um, it's up to you now. Great. So Minas U is part of Anglo-American Iron Ore portfolio. The project involves an open pit mine and a beneficiation plant producing a high-grade pellet field in the state of Minas Gerais. Uh, but the ore is transported through a slurry pipeline over 500 kilometers to the state of Rio de Janeiro using water to do that. And the production started here in the second half of 2014, and we produce around 26 million tons annually. Uh, due to the lar large area of operation and several structures installed to Mina Minas Gerais to Rio de Janeiro, an integrated water resources data management is required because we currently have several systems and tools used to get all the resources, water resources data, and some of them are acquired manually, like precipitation, some of that are automatic, like surface water abstraction, and some of them are obtained indirectly, like from the water balance, from the tailings dam water balance, uh, we have discharge on the ocean. We have lots of laboratory analysis results for water quality. But this information nowadays are available in different types of spreadsheets and databases. Because of that, the process of analyzing, combine, consist this data is now not really agile. But on the other hand, this data is really important for Anglo-American objectives, like we need to have real-time diagnosis, we need to define some short-term actions, uh, we need to develop medium and long-term prognosis to make our assess assessment more efficient. Uh, with that, we will have better environmental controls, uh, more reliability, resiliency, uh, legal compliance for water quality and water availability. So we hope that the, this integrated platform will avail, avail us to have uh, data in a cloud system with a geospatial tool that allow us to have remote access to this data, to define levels of assessment for authorized people, and do better source impact relations analysis to integrate all the information. Uh, with the data centralization, we, with a friendly interface, uh, we will be able to have security information, uh, more agile standard reports, and it, this will be able to be done for multiple users at the same time, uh, improving our response, our time response for unusual situations based on historical data, and in general, improving our resource man management control. Thank you, Guilherme. Thank you so much, Ligia. Uh, this was also very clarifying. Um, Douglas, uh, I'm not sure uh, if we are having any questions received from uh, from the YouTube channel. Uh, if if there are any questions uh, coming from the YouTube channel, please uh, uh, redirect them to me. Um, we are having such great explanations about the challenges. Uh, and I, I really do think that uh, we are going to be able to get some very, very um, 
fitting solutions to all of them. Guys, um, so uh, so we can speak about uh, our next challenge and final challenge for this uh, theme from uh, of water of water management. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, the water treatment for an environment return. And for this uh, specific challenge, we're going to uh, receive a couple of uh, mining companies. So we're going to receive um, some well from London Mining and also Paulo Roberto from MRN. So uh, I'd like to uh, first call some well from London Mining. Uh, are you with us? Yes, I'm here. Hello, hear Samuel. Uh, yes, Hello, we guys. can hear you loud and clear. Uh, be very welcome. Perfect. Um, Perfect. Okay, first so, of all... Uh, it's up to uh, you guys. Uh, okay. Please explain to us thank you. what this challenge is all about. Okay, first of all, I would like to say thank you for this opportunity. To us, it is very important to participate of the cycle. And thank you for your time. Thank you to have to have time to uh, listen to us. And uh, so uh, we are from Chapada Mine. Chapada Mine belongs to Landing Mine, and we are about 400 kilometers far from Brasilia and Goiânia in Goiás State, Brazil. So here we have uh, a lot of challenges with water management management and uh, our site have a very positive water balance so we have a lot of more water than we need so the question is what to do with this excess of water we cannot only we cannot just uh, we cannot just uh, spend this water and also we cannot discharge this water in the rivers, for example. And so there is a specific challenges. For example, our site have uh, asteroid age characters. So first of all, it's important to find solutions for treatment, specifically copper, aluminum, and iron. Uh, it's important to observe some national laws and guidelines, for example, CONAMA, and sometimes even when we observe these guidelines and the legislations, there's a risk to environmental life, aquatic life. So this is the two questions that uh, we need to keep in mind. Observe the legislation and find solutions for ecotox dangers. Um, we are an open pit site, and I think uh, this is the this is the, the reason. And basically, this is the question. This is the challenge. Thank you so much for your explanation, Samuel. Especially being there on site, uh, where this challenge is really, really, really felt. Um, it's it's very interesting with all of these um and, and one thing that's really interesting about mining hub and especially about this age where uh we're, going, we're getting everything online is the ability uh to unite people from different parts of of brazil different regions yes, of brazil yes, even yes, different yes. countries and in, in yes. bringing uh together with such ease is is, is, is an improvement uh from uh, the previous age yeah. In yes. Ways to speak. Uh, this is really interesting. Yes, just one more information. Uh, yeah. Here we have three really big and huge pits, open pits, and we have the second largest and bigger uh, TSF of, Bra of Brazil. So that's why, that's why we have a lot of water here. And this water, this excess of water, is a problem to development uh, new pits in new uh, mining areas. So that's why we need to find a solution for this excess of water. That's great. 
thank you so much, uh, Samuel. I'd like now to call uh, Paulo Roberto from, M from MRN to uh, speak a little bit about how this challenge fits into their reality. You have listened from uh, London Mining, and now you're going to listen from MRN, who is also uh, proposing and sponsoring this challenge. Hello, Glenn. How are you? I'm fine, Paulo. Uh, it's with you now. Okay. Uh, are you continuing uh, that challenge? What treatment for environmental return? So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Paulo, and I represent the MRN. Mineração Rio do Norte is a bulk site mine company located in the northeast region of the state of Pará, in Brazil. We are in the middle of the Amazon rainforest. So inside of a national forest and a biological reserve. So we, we have a lot of, we have several riverside, quilombola, indigenous communities around. That, that brings a lot of challenges for our operation. Uh, as a reference, we are 400 kilometers from the city of Manaus and 900 kilometers from Belém. Uh, so we are in the middle of the Amazon. Uh, about our operation, we are the largest bulk site mine operating in Brazil, with a capacity of 18 million tons per year. Uh, we can divide our operation into two big parts, mine area that contain the mines, crushers, washing plant, and the tailings dam, and that are 30 kilometers away, and the port area that contain the dryers and maintenance facilities, product, uh, or stocks, uh, dry and wet water, and the shipments. So we are, have a port at the Trombetas River here. here. Uh, I'll talk about our challenge. As you can see in the top of the illustration, uh, is related to, to the FON treatment system in the port area uh, that contains five settling ponds. Uh, they are ca called B1 to B5, uh, which, which feed the water dams, A1 and Agua Fria, and before return that water to the environment. So uh, that's important. And the critical part is during periods of the great rainfall, mainly between February to May, uh, there are such strong rain. There are even occurrence of rain up to 500 millimeters a month and some rainfall of 100 or 150 millimeters is in a just a few hours. So uh, such a strong rainfall uh, here in the Amazon. Uh, so uh, in that period, the volume of the effluents that reaches the settling pot, ponds uh, increases a lot. And the color of the, the water eventually changes, become kind of reddish. Uh, due to the presence of the suspended colloids, uh, which is very characteristic of the area with the presence of bauxite. Uh, if so, uh, the main parameters in the CONAMA 430 environment standard, such as turbidity and sedimental salts, are met. So we are compliant with that standard. Uh, therefore, our challenge is to develop a solution that eliminates or reduces uh, this effect of change of the colors become reddish of the effluent during periods of the high rainfall. So in the, the, the periods February to May here. Uh, with that return of the water to environment, it fault that kind of suspended colloids. Uh, say that, uh, MRN goal is to have a sustainable mining operation in the Amazon rainforest. So uh, thank, thank you all for attention and we are open for the, the questions. Thank you so much, Paulo, for your presentation. Um, I think that with that, we can conclude uh, all the three challenges that were uh, listed in our call for applications for uh, the water management theme and um, such an important thing, right? I mean, um, they all are, but this one specifically is one that really touches me and one that really makes me happy that we're being able to work 
and uh, solve uh, challenges that are, are being faced by the mining companies uh, within it. So, guys, uh, before we go, we go on. Uh, I'd like to give a quick shout out uh, to Douglas, who is managing uh, our background, uh, making a wonderful job of making sure everyone is online at the right time and making uh, making sure everyone uh, is guided uh, as to what is going to speak. I'd like to give a, uh, also a shout out to Carol, who, who worked with us uh, uh, at Neo and is also really, really um, invested in, uh, in MSTAT. And also, uh, I'd like to give a shout out to Lorena and Gabriele, who, who also uh, were also colleagues of ours. Uh, Lorena, who was with you guys in the Portuguese version of this webinar yesterday and conducted it with uh, the happiness and, uh, and the master of um, conduction of webinars that she that she that she is she conducted it uh, perfectly and I'm trying my best here to uh, to make up uh, with her presentation so guys moving forward let's talk a little bit about uh, some questions from uh, MSTAR cycle 5 so main points that uh, you guys may have doubts about uh, are the call for applications uh, and the first one that I'd really like to clarify and make sure that everyone's on the same page is uh, who can participate and uh, apply solutions for MSTOT. In order to participate on the program, um, you have to be in a startup. And uh, the, the goal is to reach out uh, for startup companies. They're, that's what we're, where we're aiming to. Uh, and by that, we mean technology-based companies with the capacity to develop a proof of concept uh, with scale, with a scaling potential. So that, uh, that needs to be really, really clear. And uh, that's where we're aiming and what we want uh, to be uh, involved in a part of, M of MSTAT. So that's for you guys, uh, the startups. And... Uh, Another um, way in which you can participate uh, is in if you are um, a spin-off, which is a company derived from another organization with the purpose to dedicate itself to innovation, you may also participate in the program uh, using that spin-off, which is a really, really important aspect of this as well. Next question and very frequently asked uh, question is, can I apply for more than one challenge? Especially with the, uh, with the themes uh, that we're working for, your solution may apply to both, uh, for instance, the, the border management team that we just uh, went through, uh, your solution can apply for more than one challenge. So uh, can you apply that uh, for, two challenges at the same time. Yes, you can. However, uh, your startup may only perform one proof of concept. So uh, if you are, if, if you do, if your solution and your proposal do move forward through our selection process, uh, reaching the end of it, you must make a decision uh, during the immersion stage uh, as to which uh, challenge you will dedicate your efforts to. And you can choose uh, only one POC if you are selected to perform more than uh, more than one. If you need for, if you are running uh, and 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 disputing the the right to um, perform more than one POC in a diff in two different challenges. So keep that in mind. You may apply, but uh, when the time comes to actually perform the POC, you can only do uh, one. And uh, as you can really focus and um, your attention into getting that really, really well made and well done. Next question that we get asked quite a lot and quite often, it's what is the budget uh, for the proof of concept? So the resources available uh, by the sponsoring mining companies for the validation of, the, uh, of you guys uh, uh, proof of concepts will be agreed during uh, the immersion stage. Then, in, in, uh, at the beginning of the proof of concept stage, actually, I'm sorry. Uh, and 
that will be agreed through a contract that will be signed with uh, between you guys and the sponsoring mining companies. Uh, you guys will, will inform uh, what resources are needed to perform the proof of concept in that step. So uh, at the beginning of the proof of concept stage. Uh, and this budget will be defined uh, during the immersion stage. So you guys will be able to talk about um, how much will you need uh, with the sponsoring uh, companies uh, during that period of, the, of our program. And uh, finally, uh, what are the selection steps uh, of our uh, MSPOT Cycle 5 program? Um, this is also a very uh, frequently asked question. So uh, the, one of the good things about um, recording live sessions uh, in, uh, in YouTube is that you guys can watch it again. And so the frequently asked questions, just check on, uh, on our stage here and our, uh, our steps here that you will be able to get that uh, answer in a very uh, easy way. So what are our selection steps? It's the application um, via online form uh, available at our website. Uh, Claudia has already stated it, but it's uh, always good to uh, say it again. So uh, www.mininghub.com.br. Uh, you will find all of the information there, um, not only from, M uh, from MSTOT, but also for, all, for our different programs and for all of the information regarding Mining Hub. But you will find uh, the especially uh, here, what we're interested in is the area application form. You will find the link to do that in, at our website. After that, um, you will go through a technical screening of the projects uh, involving each one of the mining companies. After that, you're going to perform a brief interview with the mining companies in a pitch format uh, in a way that the mining company can um, actually evaluate your proposition uh, in a bit more of a detail. And finally, our final uh, step on the selection stage is the immersion and final presentation of your POC uh, proposal or your proof of concept proposal, where you will finally be judged and the, our uh, winner for the uh, proof of concept stage will be uh, decided. If you guys have any other questions, uh, feel free to direct that to mstart5 at mininghub.com.br. We will be answering uh, them as soon as possible. And uh, if you do have any questions, any doubts, any um, thing that you want to, uh, the, the help from the Mining Hub uh, team for in order to complete your application, feel free to send us an email and reach out to us through mstart5 at miningHub.com.br. So with that out of the way, uh, and, and if we do not have any more uh, questions from, from YouTube, I think that we can move forward to uh, our next theme uh, in, our, in, our, um, in our program, and, um, which is uh, tailings and waste management. Let me just check here uh, who is going to uh, speak first. So, okay, uh, we're going to have this, this challenge first. Uh, and I'm going to speak a little bit. Uh, this, the next challenge that we're going to speak a little bit about is the reuse of gold, copper, and silver tailings from dams. And for that, uh, I'm going to um, ask from Anglo Gold, uh, Fernanda, Fernanda, are you there with us? Fernanda, can you yes. hear? Yes. Hello, everyone. Hi. How are you? I can I can hear you. Oh, great. Uh, Fernanda, feel free uh, to explain uh, to us your um, your reality and how it um, fits with this challenge and why you guys are proposing it. So hello everyone, uh, my name is Fernanda. I work with Anglo Gold Ashant. Um, we brought this challenge here as we following a, a worldwide uh, 
tendency, right, of uh, taking the opportunity to reprocess tailings that in a moment in the history was a tailings from, from our process, but we do uh, see it as an opportunity since we are having other technologies and other perspectives of process, we can, uh, instead of having liabilities, we can uh, transform that into opportunities of, of um, reprocessing it and make some, um, some, um, well, instead of becoming just just um, liabilities, we we have some opportunities to make some money in that while decreasing environmental and social liabilities. Okay, we know that those tailings are uh, a result of technology of other times, and as we improve in the technology and as we uh, seek and as we discover other other process methodologies, we know that we can um, transform what was once a problem or a liability into opportunity. So that, that was why we brought this challenge here for the Mine Hub. Uh, one, one thing that is important to mention as well is uh, why it is a, a challenge, right? Uh, we have different sources of tailings we have tailings in in tailings dam. We have uh, some some wastes that was considered waste once, and the challenge is exactly to to uh, to change this this scenario and uh, converting what was considered waste into a product. I think this was this is the the, the challenge here, and since this was uh, th those are products from different um, process <laughs> types, um, it is a challenge to find a way to reprocess that and become it viable, uh, 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 to find process that, that can hold these um, um, multiple characteristics and, and diversity of, of the tailings. So I think that the, the main challenge host is in there. Thank you so much for that, Fernanda. Uh, and uh, I, I forgot to mention earlier, but this challenge is being proposed by four mining companies. And uh, after Jaguar, uh, after Anglo Gold Jashanti, uh, from uh, from where we just listened to Fernanda, uh, another mining company that's also proposing this challenge is Jaguar Mining. So uh, to speak in. in uh, in their name, I will call uh, Vitor Teixeira. Vitor, uh, are you there with us? Hi, Guilherme. I'm here. Hello, Vitor. How are you? I'm fine, and you? I'm fine. Uh, feel <laughs> free to explain to us your reality on this challenge. Okay. Uh, our challenge is the same of uh, Fernanda. Uh, in the past, we operated the, our mines. We have three concentrators that produce uh, tilings with contents of uh, from 0 0.5 grams per tons of gold in it. From this, uh, two, two, two grams for tons in the content. So we have, um, I think, 15 million of, of tons of material with this content. We know that uh, with leaching process, we can uh, recover this material, but we know that with another route, a new route of process, we can, we can, we can operate with this. Uh, as an example, in Brazil at King Ross, King Ross operates nowadays with 0 0.5 grams per tons of gold. And we have this on our tailings from this to, to more. So I think it's very, uh, it's a very good challenge to study these tailings and find a route of process to, to operate with this. And the other, other thoughts, we can work with our tailings, our waste, maybe producing some kind of of uh, things to the civil marketplace or another another market to use this.
Thank you so much, Vito. That was also very uh, clarifying and sobering. So uh, our next uh, invited, uh, our next invitee actually is uh, Adriano from uh, London Mining. Um, Adriano, are you with us? Hello, welcome, my friend. Uh, please feel free to explain how the reality of London Mining uh, fits into this challenge. Well, first of all, I just like to to uh, say that I'm again, as yesterday, I'm taking advantage of my my colleague Samuel. He has already uh, given some information about uh, land mining here in Brazil. So I just wanted to to add, if I can, and help him to to, to better. So uh, London uh, is a copper mine, as we explained, and it produces cons uh, copper concentrate. Adriano, uh, let me interrupt you uh, really quickly. Uh, can you uh, approach yourself from the microphone just a little bit I'm so sorry. we can hear you better? I'm sorry. Oh, that's uh, way no. better. No. Okay. I'm going to reward some, some 15 seconds, seconds now. Okay. So, as I was saying, I, uh, I, I, I'll take advantage of my, my, my colleague here of London, Samuel, who has uh, given his presentation right before me. And uh, he was uh, saying something about uh, landing. And landing is here in Brazil, uh, uh, an open pit operation, you know, that produces a, a concentrate of copper and with including some gold, uh, gold as well, right? Today, uh, we are, our capacity is currently uh, around 24 million ton per year of, cons uh, of uh, ore as a whole, the capacity of processing uh, processing plant. So, well, but London has already other operations in all over the world, in Chile, Portugal, Sweden, and also uh, uh, United States. So, uh, mainly based on copper, zinc, gold, and nickel as well. So, but one important highlight I want I'd like to to to, to bring to you now uh, is that uh, the last uh, last quarter here in 2020, uh, London has been ranked. Uh, as the top uh, 10 lowest uh, all all in uh, sustaining cash cost right so effectively it, uh, landing hanged uh, not landing landing but specifically here chapada mine here at uh, uh, maraca where uh, i work you know so it's very it's a very competitive operation so it brings a lot of value for us and even so we still have to count with some uh, uh, help from, for instance, uh, the startups and, and uh, the mining hub uh, efforts to bring to us more value. You know, as a as a, a, a concentrate company, we we look after always to keep this kind of co uh, cash cost as low as possible, keeping the the integrity of all the employees and all the the colleagues here. Uh, uh, always on, if you know what I mean. So uh, we have to, to 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 look after that, right? So not only to be ranked as the best one, but to be competitive in the market, right? Uh, and bring and 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 deliver results for all involved here. So, well, our first uh, coming to the 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 first uh, challenge we have with you now. Uh, the challenge is that uh, can we use, for instance, our tailings uh, for uh, to deliver uh, more more uh, revenues or even uh, more benefits to all of us involved here with the operations? Today we have something around uh, 185 million cubic meters of tailings in our dam. It's going to reach uh, in the future 500 million cubic meters. So we have uh, a huge amount of, of tailings. Uh, and uh, the, the challenge is, uh, can we use it uh, uh, in a way that uh, we can deliver a result and, and profit to all involved? So this is the challenge. Today, uh, uh, landing here in Manaka is not uh, looking after, I mean, uh, only for more space to dispose tailings. We are looking after some uh, ideas to explore more the tailings as 
as a product to 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 product uh, to to generate more value, right? Not to to uh, deliver more space for the company to to uh, pile more tailings, right? And this is our our challenge now. So uh, I I would like to to bring you this, this summary of the challenge because it, it effect, in, uh, effectively it did this uh, summarize our, our idea in this partnership with the, the startups and mining hubs. So uh, to bring value to all involved and bring some ideas and thinking out of the box we are now, okay? I'm pretty sure uh, our colleagues from the, the suppliers in uh, startups uh, can, can help us to find some ways to to uh, to produce other or to use the tailings in other ways. Okay, thank you. That's great to hear, Adriano. Uh, I'll bring you back in a short notice, but just for our next challenge. But for uh, to speak, uh, still speak about this uh, challenge, the reuse of gold, copper, and silver tailings from dams. Uh, I'll bring here uh, our final guest for this challenge, which is Isla from Nexa. Yes. Hi, Guilherme. Hello, Isla. How are you? Um, I'm fine, so, Guilherme. Good morning, good uh, afternoon to everyone. Exactly. Yeah, everyone who's been listening to us when, wherever and whenever they are. And yeah. uh, feel free to um, close this, um, the, the explanation for all of this challenge as, as well as you can, explaining to all of them uh, which is the reality and how the, the uh, next resources fit into this challenge. Yes, thank you. Uh, so, as part of the research and development team of Nexa, I will talk about the challenge recovery of gold and sil silver and copper from tailings then. Let's start our contextualization like uh, the other colleagues do. Uh, the mineral process facilities have limits to metallurgical recovery, mainly in function of different technologies, uh, technologies applied. Then, a part of the interest minerals are sent to tailings. As in many processes, the ratio between tailings and product mass is very high, in general, higher than 10 times. The tailings get low grade of interest metals and get the most of the letters or no economical elements. Uh, for example, we can say uh, state silicate, aluminum, iron, calcium, magnesium, and others. So the chemical and mineral mineralogical characteristics of many many tailings make it a great challenge to develop robust process for recovery metals from tailings. Uh, summarize this, this challenge, uh, we, can, uh, we could say a low grade of copper gold in, in silver present in these tailings, a complex mineralogical association, a high mass to be processed, the way to remove the material present in, in the tails then must be considered. And finally, the presence of high levels of impurities, whether naturally present in the my, min, mineral source or arising from the chemical reagent of mineral process, uh, we have taken into account this. That's it. Uh, thank you. I hope uh, we, can, we are open to your innovation solution. And thank you, Guilherme. That's it. Thank you so much, Isla. Uh, I'll bring you back uh, in a short time to speak about our next challenge, which is the reuse of gold and copper waste rock piles. And uh, to speak about this one, I'll bring back Adriano from London Mining, which you guys just heard. Uh, Adriano, are you there with us again? Yeah, here I am, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you all for stay, uh, staying uh, with, with us again. So, uh, well, our second, our second uh, our challenge is quite the same, I mean, in terms of the objective of the first one I, I've just told you a few minutes ago. So it's a re reuse of gold and copper waste uh, rock piles. Well, effectively, uh, uh, as by my, my uh, colleagues has just uh, all of them mentioned, uh, this byproduct, I mean, uh, like tailings and, and uh, uh, rock piles, uh, they are not interest for us. No, you have to find a way 
to to reuse it or even uh, to make money or to make some uh, uh, at least some uh, social or environmental benefits from this you know so uh, our waste is a very huge amount of waste so we have been using uh, in some uh, initiatives here for civil uh, civil works uh, our our waste like for instance to prepare concrete you know or even to to make a layer of channels drainage uh, draining cha uh, channels right or even even hawk fuels as well in dams so we have already been using this but a little amount of this because the the, the applications are are brand new and 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 uh, i mean uh uh we have to to reinforce uh we can sometimes uh use uh, uh our rock fields instead of some other already present in in the in the market today right so i would say that uh, our challenge is quite the same is finding a way to use it right not only not for uh, open more space for us can can uh, uh, dispose more waste or more more tailings, right? But more, much more than this to make a uh, uh, use for use of it, right? Make profit even uh, 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 some benefits like for uh, social or environmental or cleaning the area or you know. So we are open to to receive to receive some hints and ideas from our colleagues for from startups and money hub. Well, to help us to think again, how out of the box we are now, right? I think uh, they get a way to, to help us for sure. Even uh, they they bring uh, bring in some some new methodology of the, the ways of thinking differently from we think today. You know, okay, let's think together. Let's work together. This is the the summary of the challenge. Thank you so much, Adriano. I think that open innovation is such a wonderful tool uh, to bring this uh, to the table to every company. Uh, I mean, to uh, hear and um, and bring in new ideas and new uh, ways of thinking and new solutions uh, which are already uh, available in the market. So, um, perform open innovation is such a very good methodology to, um, as you said, think outside the box. Yeah, so, uh, in order to also uh, talk a little bit about this uh, this challenge, I'll bring back Isla from uh, Nexo Resources. Isla, are you there with us? Yes, I can see that yes, you're already there. Yes, I'm here. There. Okay. Um, welcome back again. Fantastic. And um, feel free also to explain uh, this challenge to us. Okay, thank you. Uh, so... Uh, a little different uh, challenge here, but uh, I will make a contextualization again. Uh, can, we can see the difference here. Uh, to tackle the recovery of copper and gold from waste rock material, uh, it's no the ratio between waste rock and our present is our border. Uh, in, in our border is a key factor and could determine if it's economically relevant or not. In general, a very attractive ore body has a low rate between waste rock and ore with uh, low mining costs. Mine operation have using cutoff grade or NSR net smelt return approach to classify the material economically relevant, the ore, and to discard no economical material, the waste rock. Uh, although waste rock material, it is no economic at this time, consider applications of conventional process or technologies, it is still contain low quantities of copper and gold uh, that could be economically relevant in the future, either by application of new technologies or by an uh, effect of raising the uh, metal prices. Therefore, waste rock material can represent a good opportunity in the future to many companies as metal resource using the high technology of process. Uh, to finish, uh, let's summarize the, the characteristics of this challenge. Uh, we again have a low grade of copper and gold uh, at waste hop deposits. Uh, we have, again, a, a complex mineralogical association too, and, and high practical size of material. 
and high mass to be processed, a deleterious element present to get the copper and gold in waste rock deposit, and finally, a difficult to drill and model the waste rock deposit for future mining plan. Uh, so uh, that's it. Again, we hope uh, we can send your solution, innovative solutions, and send us uh, your question by email. Uh, we answer them and uh, work together soon. Thank you. Thank you, Isla. Uh, just to remember that uh, to uh, send us your questions through email, you should uh, reach out to us through uh, mstart5 at mininghub.com.br. We will uh, redirect, redirect questions or answer them uh, as best as, as we can. So our next and final challenge to speak about uh, this afternoon uh, is, let's change the slide here, an integrated waste management system. Uh, and uh, I will also bring from uh, Nexo Resources, the same company as uh, Isla was talking uh, as, as um, the same company uh, Isla works for in is uh, Thaisa Bisako. Thaisa, are you there with us? Yes. Hello, everyone. Hello, Guilherme. Hello, Thaisa. Uh, yeah. You're very welcome. Uh, uh, I believe you are our last guest, but not um, uh, the least important in any way. Uh, <laughs> please be very, very welcome and feel free uh, to explain to us how um, this challenge, the integrated waste management system, fits into Nexo Resources uh, reality and how it will help you guys uh, to perform better. Okay, thank you. Oh, uh, uh, we are we are from Nexa, uh, integrate company of Zinc. Uh, we have operation in Brazil and Peru right now. We are current operation three mines in Peru and one smelter and two mines and two smelters in Brazil. And like the other mining companies, we generate a significant amount of waste during the year. Uh, common waste, recycle waste, industrial waste, and tailings. And consequently, we have a big and large uh, volume of data to work. Uh, it's a big challenge for us. Uh, for this, we are looking for a global system can help us with the manager of this process. Uh, what we are looking in this, this system, in this global system, we are looking for a system can help us with connecting the field data to the system, to conduct and elaborate forms to results and to record information from generation to final destination, to consolidate costs uh, related to transportation and to destination and to storage these wastes in our company and can help us to build annual, annual inventories uh, related to all these topics, uh, to control legal information like permits and other information related to the employees and employees uh, could help us with the transportation and the final destination. Uh, a system can help us to build the annual reports uh, for environmental agencies and for environmental index too, and can help us uh, to uh, internal and external reports too. Uh, we are looking for a system uh, which will be available for computer and mobile phone and when all the levels in EXA can access this data. And we know uh, probably we will, we will uh, find or we will have uh, red systems in Brazil or in Peru, but now we are looking for a one only system can help and work with us in Brazil and Peru and can be used too in other countries where next uh, probably we will have new projects in the future. Uh, I think this is the description of this challenge, and I will here for <laughs> explain some something more, and also available for questions by email. Thank you, Guilherme, and taking thank everyone. Thank you so much, Thaisa, for your ex explanation. Uh, I believe that with that we can uh, conclude our session on uh, challenges today. We talked about uh, six different challenges in two different teams, and uh, but 
we are not yet completed. We have not yet completed all of the available challenges uh, in M spot in M start cycle five. Um, keep in mind that coming up next. Uh, and uh, already um, put a, a date on your schedule. We are going to have lives on um, October 11th and October 11th uh, on the uh, on the 10th, actually. Uh, on the I'm sorry. Uh, on uh, November 10th and November 11th, we're going to have lives both on Portuguese and English with the following challenges. Uh, the social with this, the challenges in the following teams: social development, alternative energy resources, safety and occupational health, and operational efficiency. Just for you guys to keep in mind, I will say that again: uh, it's uh, next week on Tuesday and Wednesday, so the eleventh, uh, the tenth, and the eleventh of November. We will be addressing uh, the uh, remaining challenges of M Start Cycle Five, guys. Uh, I've, with my final uh, advice for you guys, do not miss our deadline for application, which is at the end of the month on um, November November twenty ninth. Uh, you find the link for applications at the website at, at our website, so mininghub.com.br. Reach out in our reach out to us and uh, be very aware of our social media for all of the updates so follow our linkedin our youtube channel here where you guys are probably seeing this and also uh through linkedin uh, we have a TikTok uh account so then all obviously all the other social media and on instagram facebook and twitter and feel uh, and that is at hub the so um Keep us uh, in your bookmarks and, and check us uh, constantly as we are constantly bringing up news and um, new opportunities for both our startups and for the mining companies. Uh, if you do have any questions about MSTOT Cycle 5, redirect direct them to mstart5 at mininghub.com.br. That cannot be stressed enough. Guys, I believe that that's it. Um, we um, had a wonderful session here today speaking about uh, the initial two uh, themes from uh, MSTART Cycle 5, both water management and waste management. Um, I expect to see you again uh, next week where we will conclude our uh, following our following themes. I hope that everyone's well. Um, I hope that whenever in, or wherever you're seeing this, uh, everyone uh, involved is um, going uh, all right through this difficult time and this pandemic time that we're, we're living, uh, but that we're also being able to uh, work and, and uh, still uh, drive our programs and drive innovation in the mining company forward. Uh, with that, I will conclude uh, this session and, and wish you uh, guys a very uh, good rest of the week and of the afternoon. Bye.